Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the first affiliated hospital of Harbin Medical University in Heilongjiang Province, China. I am Dr. Cao Yang from Cardiovascular Department. Actually, it is a great honor and we are all excited to be the moderator of the current operation through MedStream 360 to demonstrate our theory and the techniques in our daily PC. will enjoy the following unique CTO case. Next, please allow me to introduce the leading operator of today. The first operator of today is Professor Li Yue, a very experienced high volume CTO operator. Professor Li is also the vice president of our hospital. And the next, I will give the rest of the time to Professor Jing Ling to introduce the general information of the current case. Please, Dr. Jin. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Jinling from the first affiliated hospital of Harbin Medical University. Now I'm glad to introduce the operator today. Uh, the leading operator is Professor Li Yue. The second operator is Dong Guo, Wang Dingyu, Shi Zhiyu, and me. The moderator is Cao Yang. Next, I will introduce the general information about this case. The patient is 60. Eight years old with hypertension for 30 years, diabetes for one year, and smoking for 54 years. His chief complaint is paracetamol chest pain for 10 years. His ejection fraction is 65%. Next, the following is laboratory data. We can see glucose and plasma lipid level is abnormal. Next. The electric cardiogram shows the left axis deviation. Now, one year ago, the patient performed angiography at a local hospital. Next. We can see left coronary artery is normal. With correlatory collateral flow from RCX and the septal to distal of RCA. Next. Next. Now the RCA is a total occlusion. The patient uh, at uh, one year ago, the patient at the local hospital performed angiography, the doctor attempted to recognize the RCA but failed. Next, we will invite Dr. Professor Lee to introduce more detail about this patient. Hello, everyone. So just now, Dr. Jing already introduced the baseline information of this patient. So as we know, this patient is a RCA proximal uh, middle portion, should be middle portion total occlusion and uh, with a bump step, stamp and uh, with a uh, uh, side branch at the ostium of the proximal cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, first time, uh, the patient uh, tried PCI by the field, and the, uh, the length of the CTO or uh, occluded uh, segment should be more than 20 uh, millimeter. millimeter yes. And uh, for this patient, uh, certainly uh, there are several Collateral channels from the RC, the FC lateral collateral. The circ, which one could be used uh, for the retrograde uh, approach PCI? We, we, we couldn't make sure. We mm -hmm. should uh, mm -hmm. do a bilateral angiogram this time to, mm -hmm. to choose the optimal collateral channel. Mm -hmm. And for this kind of uh, cheap PCI case, uh, certainly, we will do our CT angiography first and mm -hmm. use the intelligent uh, visualization system. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to make sure uh, the distribution of the CTO lesion. And uh, this is the RC CTO. We can see the yellow one should be the true lumen of the RC, and the uh, brown one should be the occluded segment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the white one is the calcification. Mm -hmm. And very uh, interesting from this uh, CTO uh, 3D reconstruction, we can see, uh, strictly speaking, this is the uh, 
uh, by occlude occluding segment yes. mm -hmm. so that means tandem occlusion mm -hmm. so as we know there is a mm -hmm. called a ct uh, recorder mm -hmm. system so uh, the ct recorder system already told us if the lesion is a tandem occluded uh, situ lesion the difficulty will increase the significantly yes. because uh, we can see there should be uh, double proximal cap and the double uh, distal cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, another information, uh, let's go back to the CT. Okay, okay, next. So we can see, uh, okay, next. So the tandem CT region should be the two segment, mm -hmm. the distance more than five millimeter. So yes. certainly for this case, more than five millimeter, it, we also could see uh, a little bit calcified lesion in mm -hmm. the proximal cap. Mm -hmm. And another very interesting is where is the proximal cap of the CTO lesion? Yes. We could uh, uh, delete the first occluded segment, the brown one, because mm -hmm. the cell, where is the cell branch and uh, where should be the proximal cap. Mm -hmm. And certainly uh, we will use IWAS to check the entry point. Mm -hmm. Uh, really, there are very long, the second occluded segment and uh, the distal cap just at the uh, distal bifurcation. Yes. Yes. So, uh, according to the CT recorder, not only the proximal cap, but the distal cap, if the distal cap is a blunt stamp, mm -hmm. also increase the difficulty mm -hmm. of the CTO PCI. So, we can see uh, uh, when we the late, the second occluded segment, the distal cap just at the distal bifurcation. Yes. Okay, next, please. So if uh, only uh, based on the GCTO score, uh, we commonly used next, the score uh, should be three, mm -hmm. no uh, no stamp. Yes. Previous, previous mm -hmm. one, previous one, okay. So no stamp and uh, uh, But also, uh, uh, occluded lens should mm -hmm. be more than 20 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So the JCTO score should be three. Mm -hmm. Next, if we use a uh, CT recorder score, this is CT recorder score. The first, uh, the score is a six point yes. uh, calculating system. Mm -hmm. And uh, both based on the characters of the uh, vision characteristics and mm -hmm. uh, on the clinical uh, characteristics. And we can see that patient certainly is a tandem occlusion mm -hmm. and the blunt stamp both at the proximal cap and at the distal cap. Yes. So uh, double difficulty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the next uh, certainly no severe calcification mm -hmm. for this case. And the uh, first uh, try field uh, one years ago and certainly the duration of the CTO region should be more than 12 months. Yes. So if we use be the difficulty, uh, very difficult very one. Difficult. Okay, okay, next. So uh, this is a study from uh, a Chinese center and uh, totally enrolled uh, more than 190 CTO lesions. And compared with the common GCTO score, they found the CT record scoring system provide a more accurate non-invasive mm -hmm. tool. And uh, uh, for predicting time efficient gallbladder crossing in the final procedure success. And uh, very interesting, uh, more than 45% of the region were reclassified yes. into different difficulties categories using the CT recorder score. And in the group with field uh, gallbladder crossing within certain minutes, 53% uh, of the region were reclassified as more difficult. difficult. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for this case, uh, after we use the uh, CT, uh, especially we use the uh, intelligent uh, visualization system, we re know mm -hmm. the lesion distribution. So mm -hmm. should be a, a difficult one. Okay, another very uh, interesting information. So go to previous slide, please. Please, previous one, previous one. Go on, go on. Okay, 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 okay. We can see just at uh, Austin of the RCA, mm -hmm. there is a uh, large yes. set branch, but yes. from the common angiogram we didn't see, sometimes mm -hmm. we may ignore this kind of 
uh, said branch. And sometimes the same epsilateral uh, correction channel to mm -hmm. the distal RC may be a very good choice for the retrograde PCI. So the CT will give us more information. Uh, so uh, let's see today's angiogram. Okay. Uh, we choose by tr uh, distal transradial approach and both uh, in the GSSH mm -hmm. and use seven French guiding, mm -hmm. the Jackins Life to 3.5 guiding for the RCA. And firstly, we do uh, a RC angiogram. We can see, uh, can you see the angio? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Okay. So from the angio, we can see really uh, still a proximal uh, middle portion, proximal, proximal middle portion mm -hmm. occlusion. And uh, there is a large side branch, and then we couldn't see the uh, no stamp. And we that the maybe the proximal cap to the should be the distal uh, of the RC, the post lateral uh, branch. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like the first time uh, we can see the cross channel not. Yes. Good mm -hmm. and no very clear connection, very tortuous in the distal portion, mm -hmm. and should not be a very good uh, candidate for the retrograde approach PCI. Mm -hmm. But sometimes this channel could be used, uh, but for this case, uh, not a good uh, candidate cholesterol channel. And from this LEO, you know, we also could see the distribution uh, of the uh, cholesterol channel mm -hmm. and. Uh, we put a work cost wire in the set branch mm -hmm. and then we could we start a little bit of the guiding and we could do angiogram again and to find the, the double austin yes. set mm -hmm. branch mm -hmm. to uh, make sure if the the set branch has a good collector channel mm -hmm. but uh, we're lucky we can see really at a uh austin of the rc there is a relatively large set branch but mm -hmm. no visible collateral channel to the distal RC. So for that case, the absolute collateral channel uh, should be not, uh, could, could not be used. And then, uh, this is the uh, left coronary angiogram. We use uh, BRS3 uh, zero guiding mm -hmm. and uh, one tips and tricks to put uh, what cause where to the circ to mm -hmm. make the uh, guiding uh, of support mm -hmm. because we also could see the left main is very short. Yeah. So uh, this is the uh, Andrew. We can see uh, several uh, septal collateral channel from the LED. Maybe the first diagonal branch and the uh, septal uh, branch and the second septal branch, but very tortuous in some yes. segment, very mm -hmm. tortuous mm -hmm. because this is a very small LED. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this kind of tortuous, channel, even the septal collateral channel uh, relatively safe, but mm -hmm. also could cause perforation. We must be yeah. very careful, uh, especially uh, when we do retrograde approach PCI for the uh, small lady. And this is the left corner arterial angiogram we can see from the IDO cranial view. We can see really the distal cap is just at the distal bifurcation. The awkward segment should be uh, two segments. Mm -hmm and the length is very long. And this is the bilateral angiogram. We can see the lateral mm -hmm. branch. Yes. So if the, the collateral branch is good, should be the first choice because mm -hmm. the direction of the retrograde wire could be directly to the distal cap mm -hmm. uh, and the, should be the optimal uh, right. route. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can see the collateral channel very tortuous, very tortuous. And uh, then I, we use IWAS to find where is Austin. Mm -hmm. So uh, could we see the uh, IWAS? IWAS, please. Okay. And we put the IWAS into the set branch and uh, routine and automatically uh, pull back the, the IWAS. And uh, please let Dr. Chow to uh, interpret the IWAS result, okay? Okay, so we can see that Professor Lee just uh, put the IWAS caster in the proximal side branch of the RCA and made a menu uh, 
uh, investment uh, to see the joint site of the main vessel RCA to the side branch. So from this image, we can see that uh, from the one to three o'clock direction, you can see that there is a very big vessel drawing into the uh, side branch. This is the uh, occluded main vessel of RCA. And uh, how to say this, the co uh, correlation from the angiography to the LC image to identify the proximal entry point of the occluded segment. So from the angiography, we can see the imaging of the black spot on the imaging caster. And also on the iris, we can see the exact spot where the mean vessel is joining inside. So this is the right spot to make the anti-grid puncture. Uh, so this is a, a great uh, help for us to identify the proximal cap and entry point of the CTO segment. Professor Lee. Okay, so the iris already show us where is the proximal cap. And uh, another thing we should do is just to do an angle when the tip, uh, the iOS, uh, the transducer is uh, just at the ostium of the R R RCA proximal cap, you can see uh, the proximal cap mm -hmm. not at the uh, angle should yes. the cap, yes. mm -hmm. but a little bit should be to the side branch mm -hmm. for maybe five millimeter. Yes. And, uh, uh, this is, is a very important information. information yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, then uh, this is another view, IO view. Okay. So uh, we still uh, try the epic collateral channel mm -hmm. to do a super selective injection. As mm -hmm. we know, for the epic collateral channel, we must use uh, uh, super selective injection to get the wire crossing, not mm -hmm. the wire surfing should be very dangerous, especially mm -hmm. for this kind of uh, small leading. Mm -hmm. But uh, the super selective uh, angle showed uh, really the epicardial collateral channel yes. is very tortuous. And we also tried a little bit with the uh, SU03. Then we tried the separate channel, and uh, the first try separate channel is the uh, first separate channel okay. because, mm -hmm. as we know, so very proximal separate channel. Sometimes we use wire surfing, mm -hmm. put uh, connect to the RC posterior lateral mm -hmm. branch. So just now I already said the posterior lateral collateral channel should be the optimal. Yes route for the right angle retrograde yes. wire mm -hmm. to to puncture the diesel cap mm -hmm. uh, but uh, very unlucky we can see uh, after we do a super selective injection and uh, wire surfing and wire surfing uh, but uh, the wire couldn't cross and uh, because this is a small lady Mm -hmm. Also, we uh, very gentle to manipulate the retrograde wire because it has been uh, reported that uh, for the surfing technique, surfing wire technique success rate uh, should be 81%. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we're lucky for this case. We can see the, the, the same wire couldn't cross and uh, we also could a little bit contrast the staining. We must Uh, vigorous manipulation, so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. Benign, and yeah. then we choose the sepal, uh, sepal, second sepal channel. Mm -hmm. This uh, crater channel also, the danger is relatively good, but in the middle portion, very tortuous, very, mm -hmm. very tortuous. And uh, in the proximal portion, there is also a, a sharp angle. Yes. And so zero three, the, the tip couldn't cross. We received the same wire. Uh, like a right angle, mm -hmm. and the wire come here, and uh, go with the uh, caravel microcatheter, mm -hmm. uh, and wire finally uh, cross uh, very tortuous separate channel. But uh, the problem is caravel, the smallest mm -hmm. uh, microcatheter, couldn't be advanced to the digital, mm -hmm. uh, couldn't cross. Mm -hmm. So how to do next? Uh, certainly we have many method could, uh, could be used to treat that kind of problem. One is, uh, let's see, the, the wire cross the 
the Sample Cloud channel and uh, OK. Tips and tricks rotate a little bit, wait for a while, just let the wire go by itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, too forceful manipulation may cause mm -hmm. the injury to slice uh, Yeah, it. and mm -hmm. then the caravel couldn't cross, and we advance more the retrograde wire to the distal to increase the support mm -hmm. and uh, use the uh, uh, Cosia Pro microcaster to try channel dilation effect. I still couldn't uh, cross, and the exchange new caravel again still mm -hmm. couldn't cross. Mm -hmm. So really, this is a very uh, challenging question. Yes. Channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next step, we should switch to the uh, anti grid approach. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is uh, spirit of mm -hmm. the hybrid mm -hmm. <laughs> strategy. This is Corsair Pro, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so uh, here we uh, and uh, firstly use Gaia third, but yes. Gaia third couldn't be advanced uh, to the uh, direction of the mm -hmm. RC mm -hmm. and uh, slide to the side branch. Okay, so this is open. Yes, we met the problem. So the proximal cap also there is no. We can see the three mm -hmm. o'clock is the proximal cap. Also no severe calcification, but mm -hmm. uh, very hard. So we use uh, CP wire, and this time, uh, this time CP wire and uh, use a relatively long and uh, large angle. Mm -hmm. So we already advanced uh, the CP wire. Mm -hmm. A little bit, but we don't know if the direction is right. Mm -hmm. Next, I will use the IWAS to check the direction, if the direction is right. With wiring, but really this is a very challenging case because two segment occlusion, if mm -hmm. no very good uh, retrograde preparation, so only based on one direction. So, should be very difficult. Okay, so we can see that Professor Lee has made a great, uh, uh, some effort uh, to make the uh, anti-grid uh, wear. However, we changed uh, to the uh, uh, Congress Pro and we made some progress. So, the next step is uh, to use the iOS image to guide the next procedure. We can see that uh, intravascular imaging is of great importance in checking uh, the proximal cap location, we just uh, use it uh, to identify the proximal entry point of the RCA. And next, we are going to use the uh, iOS to confirm uh, this anti-grid wire position to make sure that the proximal entry point is within the true lumen. And now we can see that whenever we are using the intravascular imaging uh, with the microcaster within the anti-grid catheter, so uh, here is uh, some problem I'm going through. We're using a uh, seven French getting caster. Yeah. And with a Caravel metro caster, so we can see that. Oh, that is uh, Cosia. Okay. Cosia, okay, so. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Relatively the smallest uh, diameter metro caster that we can acquire now. And the entry point is 1.4 French. And it's uh, available with a uh, IOS image catheter uh, with a caravel together. A little bit difficult to advance. Yes, because uh, there is a big curve at the proximal part of RCA, and also it is a uh, jacking right. So maybe the backup support need to be enhanced a little bit or not. Actually, there is a lot of great information in this case. Okay. Uh, although, mm -hmm. May we try? Okay. Yes. Let's okay. check whether we reach the spot okay. or not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Be careful with the, the wire. Okay. Okay, let's check the image. So maybe we make a pullback? Okay, I think we should advance a little bit more. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Stop. Okay, we we'll stop. Actually, each and every time Professor Lee demonstrated the, the uh, 
interlegend uh, CT angiography reconstruction. It struck okay, me a lot. I think we passed through the spot. Yes. I can see we can see some eccentric spots. Uh, Yes. Okay. Should be in the Should right be, yes. direction. Yes. Okay. Within the architecture of the vessel. Okay. Yes. This is good demonstration. Are we recording or not? No. Let's re record this one. This is a good demonstration, okay. I think. Okay. Record, please. Okay. It's recording. Okay. Should be uh, a little yes. bit uh, uh -huh. intimate tracking. <laughs> uh, let me check again. Let's okay. recheck. Okay. Let me stop. I will withdraw. Uh, but okay. I was carefully. Okay. I think that we can still see the Elvis image. Like, let me make a dynamic view. I think this great demonstration. You can see that from one o'clock to three o'clock, there is a very sharp, bright spot here. This is the integrated concrete pro wire, I think, and this is a very sharp border of the uh, main uh, RCA drawn into the side branch, and we can see this very sharp. Uh, spot is the um, anti grid wire. From this view, although that uh, we do not rec rec uh, recommend to uh, check the side branch from the main branch wire location, but within the CTO procedures, this is a great help because we can detect it's within the vessel architecture. So this is good promise, I think. We are within the vessel architecture. I think yeah. we can, yes. Uh, Proceed with the anti grid wire a little bit so, to check what's the. Re you're planning what we should do next. I think we can uh, try to go forward a little bit uh, with the uh, CP. Or maybe we, yes, we push uh, forward the microcaster to. Not so stiff. So, uh, for the radio approach, Justin's life to guiding caster compared with the common Justin's right guiding caster could uh, provide more mm -hmm. uh, stronger stronger backup support because there is uh, the the guiding could touch the optimal side of the aortic wall, and for this kind of RCA, if we need more. Backup support, we could uh, deep seating mm -hmm. easily. I like uh, the I like the common Jackins right guiding. Actually, just uh, like a uh, professor Lee just uh, introduced, uh, this is the uh, I mean typical CTO case with a uh, relatively big. And so uh, I will, yeah, advance a little bit uh, uh, below that branch to mm -hmm. increase uh, backup support. Backup support, yes. Okay, a little bit uh, deep seating the guiding we can see. Okay, the passive and the active, active support, backup yes. support mm -hmm. increase. Okay. And then next, I will uh, try to advance a little bit uh, mm -hmm. the Cosia micro catheter mm -hmm. because uh, the occluded segment is relatively uh, okay. It's a pretty, yeah, okay. and so pretty long. I'd like to uh, okay, are you please mm -hmm. to the condition the wear? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the CP wear is too strong. I think the first step uh, of anti grid wire is a uh, great success yeah, because we can yeah. see that the anti grid wire is within the vessel uh, architecture. Please. This is good news, I think. This is a pretty tough case. Uh, go uh, a little bit further the right. There, okay. RC, test a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew. Not very forceful. Okay, okay. Are you mm -hmm. cleaning? Are you cleaning? So, yeah, are you cleaning? So, 
No very good creator channel. Yes. So actually, one yeah. year ago, yeah. we can yeah. see yeah. relatively yeah. clear. Uh, I mean, made part uh, landing zone from the angiography. Yeah. I mean, uh, from RCA angiography. However, we noticed that there are a lot of risk factors uh, of this yeah. uh, relatively leading uh, hypertension, diabetes mellitus. So after one year, we can see that uh, the mid part of the occluded segment has been ruined. There is no clear landing zone. Uh, so from the uh, uh, RCA angiography. So after yeah. one year, we can see the vessel gets uh, situation get worse. Oh, actually, we are not getting. I mean, some solid information from the uh, I mean angiography because uh, we can see that the cholesterol channel has been uh, ruined since uh, this one year follow up. Are you? Are you? And also, as we know that uh, the problem of having an big subbranch at the proximal calf is that uh, can cause differential. And cause preferential gateway yeah, entry into the patent branch and failed to engage the CTO segment. And also, uh, we can see that the insertion of a gateway into the set branch is uh, of key importance. Just like in this case, that we put a, a wire and also a 2.0 balloon in the set branch, yeah, which see. can act as a marker of the set branch or region and also can increase the active support of the whole system. Sometimes the balloon inflation in the side branch can also offer active support for the whole system. When we the escalation the the wear, mm -hmm. what's your opinion? Which, which kind of wear should be the first uh, choice? Uh, I think this is a personal choice. I'm not quite sure whether there is uh, the correct answer. But for me, I think that I prefer the uh, kind of family wear. I think it's relatively a uh, good manipulation yeah. and also it's not that kind of dangerous. Since we make a good progress of the first step, we entry into the vessel architecture. I think we can try something that is not so safe. So uh, we will advise a little bit to the Cosia. Mm -hmm. Okay, advise a little yes, bit. Yes, we made okay, some progress. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to the escortation with a uh, relatively software, mm -hmm. and I use field STA. Mm -hmm. I use field STA because the root is very tortuous. Yes. Yeah. I noticed that uh, you you yes inflated the blue in the side branch to yeah. increase the yes the support, yeah. just like we just uh, talked about. Actually, for this case, I think this is a great demonstration, like Professor Lee just showed us how to uh, identify the true difficulty of the CTO case. Uh, maybe we just, uh, I mean, can just how to underestimate the, the severity uh, and the, of the CTO case because uh, the CTO segment doesn't seem to be long from the uh, angiography. However, and uh, not only from the research of the uh, CT rector study, but also you, from the uh, artificial, I mean, intelligent uh, visualization system of the CTO angiography, we can see that the CTO segment is long. It's a two segment uh, CTO uh, occluded. And also the proximal cap is uh, ambiguous and also it's a little bit tricky because from angiography, we may easily think that the proximal entry point is the connection part of the side branch and the main branch. However, from the uh, IFC image from the side branch, we identified the true entry point of the uh, anti-grid uh, uh, spot, which is not the connection part of the side mm -hmm. branch and the main vessel. So intravascular mm -hmm. imaging is of key importance in the CTO procedure, I think. There are several application, I mean, directions that we can use the IVS system. And currently, we use the two approach. First is to identify the proximal cap location in cases with proximal cap ambiguity. Second is confirm that the anti-grid wire has engaged the CTO laser, just like we just did, that we make a second pullback from the side branch that we confirmed the anti-grid CPWare 
is in the uh, Weso architecture. Uh, there are several other ways that we can use the anti-grid wire to facilitate the re-entry into the true lumen during the both anti-grid and retrograde processing or confirm that the retrograde wire has in entered the proximal true lumen, etc. So IVS system is of key importance in the CTO procedure, I think. Now that we can see that uh, Professor Lee has changed the, the anti-grid wire to attempt to go to from the anti-grid because we just uh, tried the retrograde, but the microcaster uh, has some uh, resistance in passing through the septal collateral. Yes. Uh, maybe in that segment should be mm -hmm. retorters. Couldn't make sure if the the wire the we is right or not. Mm -hmm. The entry, we, entry we, point we, is fine, but it's hard to say whether uh, yes. If, so we go if, the, for, if the wire mm -hmm. couldn't go uh, further, how to do next? Uh, this is a relatively long uh. CTO, I mean, the, the length from the CTO angiography is uh, relatively over five centimeters. So I don't think uh, ADR is a good choice because the mid part landing zone is not so clear. Mm, for me, maybe I try to use a dual lumen microcaster. I'm not quite sure whether it's a good choice or not, but it's, there's, there is a chance, I think, that a dual lumen microcaster may help us a little bit to make the parallel techniques to try to seek maybe sub internal space or goes into the true lumen. So that's my, uh, what's in my mind. So really here should be a very torture segment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in order to make the wire in the uh, vessel structure. So, uh, okay, narco sometimes also mm -hmm. could be try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, stop please. Oh, okay. Uh, because I use UDXT wear and mm -hmm. the wear, okay, as we know, the knuckle, yes. the tape is relatively small. Yes, like and a small the, curve. Okay. And small. the hydrophilic coating is, uh, uh, how to say, friendly to, yeah, to the knuckle okay. movement. So, Why the making the uh, big hematoma? I'm going another wear. Mm -hmm. Had it to, to be, had, had it 200. 200, okay. Had it 150. Had it 150. Pilot 150. Andrew, no, not not this one. Okay, the left side. Andrew, please. Oh, they are ready. My knuckle. Mm -hmm. Okay, bring it a little bit. Bring it. Okay. Okay, test. Okay. Yes, this is of key importance because we can see that after you perform the uh, uh, narco techniques uh, to cause on the sub intimal tracking that it is of key importance to avoid anti grid injection. So, why didn't uh, we draw the red retrograde wire? Because the mm -hmm. retrograde wires also could be used as a landmark. Mm -hmm. Okay, add it. That's a little bit. Mm -hmm. This anti is oh, okay, anti grid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, here yeah, I should be disconnect. Okay. Okay. Ah. So now we are using the retrograde wire as a landmark to guide the anti grid wire puncture. Uh, really, the awkward segment is too long and yes. too segment. And also, the retrograde uh, flow is not so friendly because it only ends at the, the distal bifurcation. So there is not a lot of uh, information to guide us from the anti-grid parallel techniques to seek mm -hmm. the true lumen. I don't think this is a, a very challenging case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <sighs> it's the anti-grid field, how do mm -hmm. we do next? Uh, we tried uh, the retrograde grid wire. Uh, I mean, we successfully passed through the retrograde grid wire. However, the uh, carrier microcaster and the Corsair Pro cannot pass. So although there is uh, some tortuosity, so maybe we can try to use some uh, small balloon to try to, I mean, dilate the septal, uh, I mean, curve a little bit to try to, uh, how to say it, help the microcaster to pass through. Maybe this is uh, one of the choice, but this is uh, a little 
of a little bit of risk because of the septal damage may cause some contrast, um, uh, I mean, residue and some little bit perforation. But this is, uh, I think, uh, techniques that we can try from the retrograde. Because we all know that the retrograde uh, uh, mm, fibrous cast a uh, fibrous cap is relatively softer compared to the anti grade fibrous cap. Oh, it should be in the subintimate space, mm -hmm. in a like look like a sparrow like. Mm -hmm. Okay, here must be very careful. Okay, uh, we know a little bit more, you know, okay. Okay. okay, I think that uh, the blood pressure and the heart rate is stable. Okay, and you? Oh, so okay, we you. reached the, the distal okay. bifurcation site. Be very close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. I was a little bit the micro catheter. Uh, blood pressure. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I know. So for the small old lady, mm -hmm. uh, must yes. be careful mm -hmm. the hemodynamic theaters. Yes, theater the patient. Yes, yes, it's already engaged. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll give some time for the patient to recover. Yeah, yeah, yes. we fall well. Mm -hmm. We fall well. Okay. I can see that the anterior wire has reached the distal bifurcation site. So maybe the guidance of it's the ratio grid wire. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. I think I All right. Yes. All right. Getting better. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for the small uh, old lady, put mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. <laughs> very vigorous mm -hmm. manipulation. We must be very careful. Be very careful. So the anterior uh, were mm -hmm. already very close to the distal yes. cap, mm -hmm. but uh, should be in the sub space mm -hmm. because in the distal segment we can see the wire crossing look like a sparrow. Shape. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we should how to make the wire come to the uh is to true lumen. Yes. And so also how to do <laughs> <laughs> I think different uh, projections to make sure the puncture direction is true. And also uh, maintaining the big set branch PRV is of key importance to promise the prognosis of the patient. Keep the anti grid guiding stable because the anti grid I was imaging can only guarantee the uh, CP wire is within the vessel uh, architecture, but it's not 100% guarantee is within the uh, so called true lumen. So, these years we also read the concept of the vessel architecture. We do not emphasize the true lumen idea so much because we know that the spam techniques combined with um, or to say spam uh, uh, with investment uh, without stunting. Uh, in the follow-up of three months, over something like 60% of the vessels yeah. can be recanalized. Yeah, so, quite right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, the spam means uh, something of like yes. modification. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means if the when the wear come to the distal trillion, mm -hmm. the long segment in mm -hmm. the intimate space, uh, if we implant stand because a lot of set branch loss yeah. and every mm -hmm. procedure myocardial infarction mm -hmm. may uh, we couldn't get very good prognosis. Mm -hmm. in such condition we use to zero, at least uh, to zero to, zero to yes. dilate uh, the whole whole lens, mm -hmm. and uh, after maybe one to three months to, mm -hmm. to do Andrew again, mm -hmm. uh, and for some case. We yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another type of uh, spam is uh, if the wear was not advanced uh, to the distal true lumen, mm -hmm. but uh, just uh, in the architecture of yes. the vessel, yes. so use to the blown to dilate, and next time may increase the success rate mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. uh, PCI. And mm -hmm. for a uh, very rare case, uh, also. Canalized. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Professor Lee, so how uh, is there any trick uh, or techniques that we can help us to control the anti-grade hematoma during the, for example, knuckle 
or this kind of uh, uh, sub-intimal tracking. Yeah, very important thing is try to use a tip to tip relative software, mm -hmm. like the, 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 okay, careful. Otherwise, a little bit, otherwise, a little bit to the retrograde wear and to try to make a uh, small curl at yeah. the uh -huh. knuckle wear and uh, try to avoid the more uh, use this anti mm -hmm. wearing. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, extra a little bit. Mm -hmm. Actually, like for, for the anti grid band, a small distal band is preferred for CTO anti grid for to cross because uh, it enhances the penetrating capability of the guide bear and also reduces the likelihood of deflection outside the vessel architecture or into set branches uh, arising within the occlusion. Here, so, here is the marker. Okay, mm -hmm. here is the marker. Okay, uh, if you. So uh, here is one tip that uh, creating relatively small uh, band of the anti grid wire can I only be more. accomplished by inserting the guide wire through an introducer rather than using the side of the introducer. So this is the A little bit important. Add you, please. Add you. A little bit. Now we can see Professor Lee is uh, navigating the anti grid wire uh, through the uh, occluded segment with the target of the retrograde wire. It try to go into the true lumen. So projection is of, of key importance uh, because it's quite correct projection is of great importance. Consider the uh, REO caudal projection or we can see the left uh, cranial projection to evaluate the length and the torturosity of the distal part of the bifurcation. So, uh, uh AP caudal, okay, caudal. In such condition, we should use small orthogonal view mm -hmm. to see where is the, where is the wire. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Okay. Okay, I think we are very close for the yeah. anti band to the retrograde. So the orthogonal view is very mm -hmm. important because we, as we know, the RC is very taut as well. Yes. Yeah, okay. I have to count out three a little bit. Uh, Actually, for me, that is run several what to say predictors of anti grid failure because uh, we just mentioned it's a long, I mean, torturosity occluded segment. And also, we can see that this is a pretty tough case because it's a female so, body weight is relatively small, a lot of risk factors. And also, we notice that from the baseline yeah. information of the patient, so, the blood sugar is not well controlled. Will, you know, yes. Hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and a lot of risk factors. So, after one year of follow up, we can see that the situation of the uh, you, the you. segment has got, uh, I mean, worse. So, all these things, I mean, how to say, increase the difficulty of this uh, CTO case. Okay, next, please. I think we should uh, do a little bit left corner to angiogram to, yes, check, to the check the direction. position of the wire, yes. Okay, two, please. Okay. Okay. Are we in the, yes, the, the PLB set branch or something? Uh, we couldn't make sure because. Uh, okay, if the wire could come so like to we said, any. That branch is okay. Test a little bit. Okay, sure. Uh, I think it's okay. Professor Lee. Okay, I uh -huh. think... Uh, oh, yes. I think that we, yes, go into the replication of the PLV. Mm -hmm. The feeling. Uh -huh. The feeling is very important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Andrew, again. Yes. So the feeling is very important. Okay. And you... Okay. Okay. I think that's uh, it's a... Uh, Good. Uh, I think it's a good image. At that, least. Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> but uh, the feeling sometimes may be mm -hmm. more freely. I would say, yes. Should be. <laughs> I will have more mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but be. I think, yes, okay. this kind of moment is good, okay. yes. That kind of moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we made some progress. Yeah. Uh, always the Cosia. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Like we just said, this is a CT rector. Yes, four marks. It's a extremely difficult case. 
but uh, from integrated with uh, non coding techniques, uh, integrated okay. variable goes into the, the distal the, the, the Contrast, please. Mm -hmm. So when we try to do super selective injection, we must uh -huh. uh, firstly we draw. Yes, we draw. You see if, the there, vacuum. Is, if there is continuous yes, make the blood vacuum. flow mm -hmm. back. We mm -hmm. can see blood flow back. If no blood flow back, we do not uh, do the super selective. Okay. Even we could see the blood flow back, mm -hmm. we also don't do phosphor injection, just uh, test a little bit first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I think, I think this is good. Uh, okay. Oh. Yes. Okay. See and wire, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, we're we're already maybe success. Uh, uh, yes. And so the, the, the uh, wire already come to. Mm -hmm. So that's really uh, the CT andrography mm -hmm. uh, intelligent visualization yes. like give us more information. Guided. Okay, yeah. We reconsider mm -hmm. the CTO lesion. So I suggest. Uh, uh, especially for the first uh, tri field uh, CTO case, we should do a CT andrography and mm -hmm. use this kind of software we made yes. to uh, renew the distribution mm -hmm. of the CTO lesion and uh, the, 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 the whole system, the whole system. And uh, based on the uh, CT 3D reconstruction, we can see really uh, stamp plant case mm -hmm. both at the proximal cap and at a distal cap where mm -hmm. they yes. mm -hmm. And uh, this is a tandem occlusion case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the lesion lens, even for the second occluded segment, more than 20 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for this case, but there is no severe calcification. Yeah. But even no severe calcification in the proximal cap, sometimes uh, relatively. Uh, Steve. Yes. So mm. or sometimes we may use, like in this case, the IWAS guide to find where is the ostium of the proximal cap mm -hmm. and use CP wear to puncture. Yes. Mm -hmm. And but uh, the tips and tricks not go further. Yes, too Just far. Just use IWAS to check again if mm -hmm. the wear is uh, in the right direction for this case should mm -hmm. be intimate tracking. Yes. So very precise, very precise puncture mm -hmm. uh, because we have the iwas the iwas from different view we do endogram to show us where is the austin mm -hmm. and uh, certainly for that kind of case uh hybrid is very important if mm -hmm. we, we could use absolutely collateral channel or the contralateral channel channel mm -hmm. for this kind of case may increase the success rate mm -hmm. but we're unlucky for this case the small old lady mm -hmm. the absolutely collateral channel and separate channel uh, not very good. Yes. Even for the the largest separate channel, the wire cross, but the Cosia couldn't mm -hmm. cross. Even we use Cosia Pro. Yes. Dilate mm -hmm. still couldn't cross. So some people like to use phosphor manipulation, mm -hmm. but I dislike. Mm -hmm. So even phosphor manipulation, like you small balloon to dilate mm -hmm. cross mm -hmm. for this kind of small lady after the the uh, caster cross may cause perforation. Yes. Also, mm -hmm. the septal perforation sometimes is uh, benign, but yes. sometimes may cause uh, septal huge hematoma, yes. mm -hmm. uh, may cause, a, uh, we call it stry, mm -hmm. cardio tamponate. Yes, tamponate. So very mm -hmm. difficult to treat, mm -hmm. very dangerous. So we must be very careful. The blood pressure right, uh, a little yes. high. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, for this case, uh, when the CT wire come into next tips and tricks, we should downsize. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so should the ask uh, the patient mm -hmm. the wire, and first we use uh, fuel STA wire. Mm -hmm. As we know, the wire is a taper tip, very soft, yes. very good talk response, and also would be used knuckle. So because the tip is soft, to the knuckle very is small. Mm -hmm. Would that's like Dr. Chow said would reduce the risk of hematoma because mm -hmm. if there are huge hematoma, mm -hmm. so mm, may reduce the antiquated wire re-entry into the distal yes. volumen, mm -hmm. the, the chance. Mm -hmm. So, and in the middle, very thoughts one, because I know in that segment, you already see the field I see a wire, very alters yes. route. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't precisely manipulate the antiquated wire mm -hmm. if you use a stronger wire like 
had at 150. So mm-hmm. in that segment, that's the knuckle. Yes. Okay, good. Go to quickly cross the total segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not very further directly to the yeah. end. So, no, no, no. no. Yes. Not a good choice. Uh-huh. We should rapidly exchange and advance the wear and use where to cross. Yes. And why use the uh, pad at 150? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we already know the wear in the sub intima space. Mm-hmm. So in such conditions should be the uh, last, last technique. Yes. Mm-hmm. The last technique, the wear should use relatively stiff. Pad at 200, mm-hmm. the pad at 150, I think for this small lady, mm-hmm. enough, strong enough. If this is a big guy, mm-hmm. a gentleman, mm-hmm. I may use pad at 200. And uh, another tips and tricks to puncture the distal cap, we should use orthogonal view. You want me look like in the right direction, mm-hmm. but if you call it, we can see very tortuous yes. route. So very important. Mm-hmm. Try to avoid no sense where antiquated wearing manipulation may cause big hematoma, okay. big dissection, okay. reduce the success rate mm-hmm. just with the guidance of the imaging, mm-hmm. the X-ray, the mm-hmm. IWAS, mm-hmm. and the, the 3D reconstruction, mm-hmm. etc. So I think uh, we already advanced the wear to the post-lateral branch. Mm-hmm. Yes. And next we will advance the work cause wear. And we store this one and do IWAS. Yes. Okay. And then uh, use a dual lumen catheter at once another two wires in the, to the PRV. The yes. branch and mm-hmm. the PDA. Mm-hmm. And then do IWAS again and stand in yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So even the, the wire in some segment in the uh, sub intima space mm-hmm. doesn't matter. That's like Dr. Charles said, mm-hmm. we could try. Uh, the so-called spam tech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe next time mm-hmm. when we do Andrew again, mm-hmm. the RC already we canonize. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think this is good demonstration because uh this is a CT rector four mark case. It's uh, extremely difficult. And we tried anti-grid, we tried retrograde and there is a uh, great resistance and difficulty due to the long CTO segment, uh, the tortuosity and also there is a uh, a big side branch at the proximal and distal part of the CTO segment, which caused a great, uh, I mean, uh, resistance in the recanalization procedure. However, we can see that from anti-grid uh, CP wear with the intravascular imaging guidance, we confirm this within the vessel architecture and using the uh, our narco techniques, we proceed into the distal uh, occluded segment, uh, uh, cap, distal cap of the CTO segment and using the precise puncture with a uh, pilot 150 to go into the distal true lumen of the bifurcation. So I think that we finished 80% of the case and next I'd like to so, Absolutely, the retrograde approach also worked. Yes. The retrograde mm-hmm. w- wear as a marker for the retrograde puncture. Yes. So hybrid, very mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. The imaging guidance, very important. Yes. So at present, we have many methods and strategy to catalyze the CTO, mm-hmm. but uh, how to uh, open and uh, with high quality, mm-hmm. try to avoid the com- communication is of the most importance. Okay. I think the key information is that Professor is a high volume, very experienced CTO performer and that the hybrid strategy is of great importance. We can see that we changed from anti-grid to retrograde and then we come back to anti-grid. I think that theory of a hybrid strategy is uh, very important because uh, we do not only how to say focus or stay on one auto set strategy to focus on it. Like Professor Lee said, we perform the uh, anti grid, I mean, parallel techniques using many wires to puncture with blind puncture. This is of high risk of potential okay. hematomas and damage to the vessel. I think this is a good demonstration of a hybrid theory and strategy uh, of performing in a very uh, extremely difficult CTO case. Okay, thank you. I think uh, you could move on to the next. Uh... Uh, okay, yes. Slide. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So I think that uh, we have finished 80% of the case. We go into the distal true lumen. So maybe we switch to the next case, or maybe later we come back to see the final result of the case. One pound.
actually also there is a key information in this case i'd like to emphasize that uh, actually the prognosis of the cto procedure one of the main how to say influence of the uh, uh, factors is that the maintaining all the big side branches we can see that although that we make a knuckle to make the sub intimal tracking but we do not detect any big side branch within the occluded segment. So this is of key information that why we perform anti-grade wire knuckling, because not only from the angiography, but also CT angiography, we avoid all the main shun branches. This is of key prognosis, uh, promise to the prognosis of the patient. So for the knuckle technique is a very useful method to quickly cross the uh, very tortuous. Mm -hmm. And the root I know, especially with calcified CTO lesion. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think uh, every operator should uh, I mean, uh, grasp the track of the technical uh, knuckle technique. But uh, for the knuckle technique, if we should, okay. The knuckle technique, uh, the tips and tricks and uh, the wear just of the ones not rotate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So try to make the, how to see the damage of the sub more space. Pressure. Yes, I think it's a yes, deep engagement of the guiding caster. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, I could uh, withdraw a little bit the left side. Okay. Okay. This one. Wait again. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. So Professor Lee just mentioned that uh, for the, uh, uh, how to say, using the, uh, we just performed the uh, last technique and using a uh, pilot 150 to puncture into the distal two lumen. So compared to the pilot, pilot 150, uh, what do you think about the UB3? Uh, both of these two wires are, how to say, hydrophilic. So what do you think using the UB3 as a puncture wire into the distal yeah, lumen? UB3 is a very uh, useful wire for the CTU crossing, but for the uh, stiff uh, pro uh, cap puncturing, I dislike to use UB3. And most conditions should be like a Gaia third, mm -hmm. the CP, and in most conditions, the proximal cap also no. Uh, I was please. Mm -hmm. So okay. Also no uh we'll give some atropine to the patient. Yeah, okay. Yes, one milligram. Yeah. Okay. Zero five enough. Okay. Zero point five milligram. Mm, okay. When the blood uh, pressure uh, yes, is it not come higher the sometimes uh, the Heart rate may slow down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we reduce the, the epinephrine. Okay. So this is our key importance that we need to monitoring the situation of the patient during C2 procedure. So because it's a relatively long case and uh, this is a relatively small lady. So we make sure the patient has rest enough and also had a breakfast uh, before the procedure. The crossability of the iOS caster when we use yeah, yes. to decrease. Yes. <laughs> the stiffness and also the okay. flexibility of the caster yes, reduced after several attempts. Maybe it's because of the after sheath, the material of the after sheath. But I think we will make some progress. Okay, okay, one point five balloon again. Mm -hmm. Yes. We just uh, use one point zero balloon. I think it's not enough because the outer diameter of the Elvis caster is uh... zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And give, me, zero, yes. give me Sasuke, please. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
so we can see the proximal cap really uh, relatively yes. stiff. Stiffness, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. stiffness. Relatively hard stiffness. Not classification reason, but uh, mm -hmm. fibrous tip cap. Actually, this is yeah. uh, how to say, um, we see a lot from this kind of a uh, situation for the proximal cap, especially the proximal entry point is uh, next to a uh, big cell branch. So due to the blood flow, the blood flow usually goes to the cell branch. So makes the proximal yeah. cap relatively dense, okay. a lot of fibrotic, a little bit okay. calcified blood. So as a proximal cap, so which makes it yeah. relatively difficult because the wear easily goes into the cell branch. Every tortures, not yeah. so, so this is an excellent case. Mm -hmm. If you want to see you finish the case. Okay, so <laughs> I think thank you. This is a great accomplishment. Oh. Uh, are we online on the stage now? Yeah. You'll say okay. <laughs> okay. So Professor Lee, we are still online. Okay. Uh, Dr. Meta wants okay. to see us finish this case. I think this is a great accomplishment. Thank you. And uh, we are still working on the case. So as you can see that uh, uh, after the wire goes into the distal true lumen, we're using a relatively small balloon to dilate the relatively proximal and the mid part of the CTO segment to help us uh, the imaging castle to pass through. One thing is that to check the entry point and also uh, the uh, plaque distribution, the situation, and also the sub intimal tracking situation of the uh, CTO segment. From the angiography, I think that we are in the PLV, or at least the severance of PLV, and with uh, the help of the retrograde wear in the PDA. So I think we can guarantee to maintain two main branch of the distal RCA. Mm, I think we should uh, do IWAS. And uh, let's see if this time the IWAS caster could uh, advance to the distal mm -hmm. branch. Okay. So if the I was couldn't be advanced, I will use a Sasuke micro uh, duralumen catheter uh -huh. to advance another wire. Should be maybe with the guidance of the retrograde wire to the PDA. Okay. Or the PR branch. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, Sasuke is, uh, in my opinion, is a relatively, and uh, how to say the. What is my priority for the dual lumen microcaster because it's a relatively small entry point, entry tip uh, profile with 1.5 branch. And uh, during the dual lumen uh, diameter is 2.5 branch. And some professors said that you can make a little bit of rotation with the uh, Sasuke microcaster during the push uh, movement. So let's check. Oh. I think we. Um, Strong resistance. Yeah, because okay. I think it's the okay. sub intimal tracking. Okay. Mm -hmm. The matter just, I think Sasuke, please. Mm -hmm. Another thing where, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to see too. Just uh, like Professor Lee mentioned, that uh, we should pay great attention for the retrograde wire crossing and the uh, microcaster crossing. Uh, you just uh, see that Professor Lee didn't push the uh, retrograde microcaster very hard to use the grid force to make the Costa Pro or Caravel to cross uh, through the septal, I mean, collateral channel. Although that we can see we have passed the most severe atrocity of the septal channel because uh, it's a relatively high potential risk for the septal staining. We can see some staining as a 
another side branch, although it's benign because, uh, because it does not cause a tamponade most of the time. However, uh, balloon dilation or mistaken microcaster push forward might cause septal perforation or epicardial collateral perforations. This is so great damage and uh, high risk for the CTO procedure. Sometimes may uh, stop the whole procedure because of this uh, septal damage. And coronary perforation is one of the most uh, feared complications of CTO PCI. And um, Professor Lee has just uh, developed a unique techniques to stop the septal perforation and other some small uh, perforations of the uh, side branches. It's uh, called the successful occluding by absorbable sutures for epicardial collateral branch perforation. So one tips and tricks is when we use the lumen catheter, we should mm -hmm. once a little bit further the the catheter and make the wire come to the uh, distal true lumen. Mm -hmm. Then we straw the lumen catheter. Okay. And uh, yes. okay. And epicrino. Mm -hmm. Up this. Go on, go on to okay. introduce the technique. Okay. Okay, so actually this is a great technique. I think that uh, also we do not want to demonstrate this one alive, but I think this is great information to to to, to teach the teach point. Because a collateral related perforation were high in patients with epicardial collateral than that with the septal collateral. And the several techniques have been developed to deal with the collateral branch perforation. However, our techniques is using the uh, absorbable structures to, to seal the septal or some That's other good. small side branch the perforation. One thing is that it's relatively easy to perform. We are using the microcatheter to push That's the microcatheter beneath as a proximal part of the perforation and using the um, microcatheter to trans uh, transduce the absorbable structures. We cut it into small pieces of the absorbable sutures, something like 0.5 centimeter or one centimeter something, to using the microcatheter to push the absorbable sutures to the perforation site. One thing is that we can select how many segments of the absorbable sutures we go into the occluded segment. The second thing is that we know the sutures is bioabsorbable. So after the follow-up, it can be fully absorbable by the human structure to not leave anything else that causes this problem. So I think this is a good technique. Test a little bit. This is for the septal perforation or set branch perforation. And we have another technique of the uh, biorescue. It's for the main vessel like RAD, RCS, cornflex in the main vessel with some perforation. How do we do it? Of course, the... Uh, also, say the uh, draw stand is a uh, is a one choice, but we know that the ASR rate and target layer revascularization rate is of great high. So, Professor Lee also developed another technique called the uh, bi rescue for the mean vessel oh, uh, bifurcation oh. or damage. Oh, this one. Okay. So, first, oh, we this using a uh, thrombus aspiration catheter to put it into the relatively distal part of the perforation site and using another balloon to block at the perforation site. So firstly, the distal thrombus aspiration catheter can offer a blood from the, uh, for example, femoral artery that can offer the distal perfume uh, perf uh, of the distal myocardium to not cause any uh, periprocedure myocard uh, myocardial damage, and also can reduce the risk of, uh, for example, the uh, a potential uh, myocardial infarction or um, uh, arrhythmia uh, due to the balloon, uh, I mean. Uh, so another uh, thing is that the balloon can fully seal the, the perforation for a long time without putting any draw stand or other rescue techniques to if try to 100% recovery of the original uh, vessel structure. And also we can use these techniques to try as long as possible, because we know that balloon obstruction okay. of the perforation always cause periprocedure, I mean, myocardial infarction. But with this so called bi rescue, B I R E S C U E techniques, it is great okay, help plenty. for this kind of perforation rescue. Okay, I think Professor Lee has just, uh, I mean, uh, managed uh, to put the uh, second anti grade parallel 
uh, to the distal part of RCA. But I think uh, maybe there is a hematoma in uh -huh. the proximal mm -hmm. part. So yes. just now, Dr. already mm -hmm. tried how to uh, prevent the hematoma, but uh, for those kind of uh, modality, mm -hmm. especially when the lesion no uh, the real classification sometimes easy to uh, form uh, hematoma. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if there is a big hematoma, so sometimes we may choose the spam technique. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. For the investment. Uh, okay. Yes. Because we know that uh, under this kind of situation, they are uh, knuckling, uh, knuckling uh, technique, knuckle technique, and also we push their. I think that anti-grade is a uh, Coursera or something. Um, Coursera, yes. Yes. Uh, Coursera microcaster directly to the distal end of the C2 segment. So it's uh, of high uh, risk uh, causing the big hematoma because from the anti-grade or no, although we do not perform the angiography, but the blood pressure you want. and the, okay. yes, the blood, uh, I mean, is causing the hematoma. We can try some techniques uh, some doctors try to using the cutting balloon using the uh, microcaster or uh, dual lumen microcaster to, to make the vacuum, reduce the volume and size of the hematoma. But I, I want to say that it's not 100% guarantee that you can reduce the situation and also the damage of the hematoma. If the hematoma proceed, uh, proceed into the distal bifurcation of small vessels, it's a disaster. So now uh, these years, I think that the investment theory and also, like Professor Lee mentioned, the spam strategy one. is a popular trick that's used in complex CTO these days, especially, I mentioned several times, this is a very tricky case. It's a long CTO case, very great torturosity, and also it's a private attempt case. So close attention should be paid during the procedure to avoid the section of big hematoma causing losing the side branch. Predictor of poor run of, and uh, also the uh, prognosis is a uh, pre uh, operative myocardial infarction. Okay. Right. Okay, we are trying to modify the uh, distal part of the CTO segment. Right. This is a 2 balloon, right? 2.0, wow. yes, 2 by 20. This is a 2 by 20 emerge balloon. We're trying to modify the distal uh, cap using 2.0 balloon. Actually, there is a very interesting, how to say, result uh, uh, acquired from the previous manuscript that the sub-advantage stenting VS compared to that of true to true lumen stenting there is no, I mean, obvious difference in cardiac death, percolation revascularization, and the myocardial infarction uh, during the follow-up in the CTO cases. So we do not have to worry, I mean, too much for the sub intimal tracking, or we just mentioned, uh, um, how to say, they are within the archi vessel architecture theory. So there is no uh, obvious difference uh, compared to the um, cardiac mass, target lateral vascularization, and also myocardial infarction compared to the true to true, true true true, I mean strategies. Hey, I I think I'd like to I like a new I was case okay. Yes. Inflation, please. I was please. Yes. Okay. 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 Oh. okay, I was pleased. Yes, we just noticed that I was cannot pass, but uh, Sasuki passed through the uh, occluded segment very smoothly and also get it the second. And we also there. need to pay attention to the hematoma mm -hmm. and the wear position. Mm -hmm. So the imaging checking is of great importance. Yes.
So because we already uh, trinacle technique and mm -hmm. it should be hematoma, so I disconnect yes. the mm -hmm. syringe mm -hmm. to avoid uh, the anti greedy injection. Yes, yes. Okay. Because this is a uh, very important information. I just mentioned this one earlier that we try to avoid anti-grid injection to cause, um, how to say, more severe hematomas from anti-grid approach. Yeah. But I think this uh, this trick, although it's important, but all the, uh, how to say, I think many doctors perform anti-grid injection to check. They want to check whether it's in the true lumen so or not. If there were uh, in, in the plaque, mm -hmm. so O is a, a microchannel uh, crossing, mm -hmm or loose tissue tracking, mm -hmm. we sometimes we could do anti-grid injection, no problem. Mm -hmm. But for this case, we already do not hold mm -hmm. and must be in some segment inside the, the sub internal space. Mm -hmm. Okay, still strong resistance. I think we should use a, uh, mm -hmm. yes, maybe. Let's see balloon. Yes. Let's cross the balloon, mm -hmm. C2. Let's uh, see, please. NIC 2.5, NIC 2.5. The proximal back cross. Back cross, NIC. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is why uh, at first the Gaia third wear couldn't be advanced to, to yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Fabrotic cap, yeah. relative stiff. And the okay. calcification, yes, as a proximal yeah. part of the CTO segment. Okay. So uh, for the lacrosse balloon, Dr. Chow could introduce some tips and tricks for the use of this balloon. Mm -hmm. Actually, nowadays we notice that uh, the scoring balloon system is more and more popularly used in the daily PCI because we know that it seems that the laden uh, is also updated because of the composition distribution of the uh, plug within the CTO segment is more or to say complex compared to that of the non-CTO segment. And the scoring balloon, I want to emphasize that scoring balloon is not one type of balloon, but it's a, how to say, an, 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 a series of balloon called the scoring balloon. For example, it's the specific balloon with some scoring element on the surface of the balloon. We have leg cross NSE, just like this one we are using. Mm -hmm. And also we have the other ones like the, um, uh, for example, angioscope, and we have the chocolate uh, balloon, etc. Uh, we have some scoring element on the surface of the balloon with some neon uh, thread on the surface of the balloon. After the, uh, how to say, we can see the dilation. This kind of uh, scoring element can perform some cutting techniques uh, to the flux. It can press and make some uh, slags, some cuttings uh, of the plug to help us to make a better dilation. Uh, however, cutting balloon is not a uh, scoring wow. balloon. So this is the main uh, difference. And also there is uh, some uh, studies uh, performed by the other professors uh, mentioned that, for example, the uh, CTO segment, sometimes that uh, we can see uh, the composition of the plug is more complex compared to the non-CTO segment, which means that the uh, attenuated plug calcified plaque, this kind of composition is relatively more often seen in, within the CTO segment, which uh, forms this kind of um, difficulty in passing through these kind of devices. Although that we have made some progress during the equipment and also the techniques of CTO procedures. So the set brand balloon is very useful for ankle mm -hmm. yes. to increase uh, like a part of the guiding mm -hmm. and uh, also make the whole system stable mm -hmm. and also could be used uh, okay uh used uh, for balloon trapping yes so very useful when we use okay okay so actually like the professor uh, 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 produced some resistance so mm -hmm. here i think Restore a little bit. I rarely use this oil balloon. It dilates if I press the cap. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So one thing we should may pay attention is sometimes the rotation of the malware. Yeah. Mal most. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 strong, relative strong, this is natural. Maybe sometimes that we can see the wear, the polymer of the wear after several kind of a uh, long time of uh, usage, all these kind of uh, balloons and devices on the surface of the wear, maybe damage the polymer of the uh, uh, the wear. So sometimes the delivery, the delivery of some equipment, some specific de uh, equipment, it'd be troublesome. I think okay. you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. When that, through, that yes. is what I worry about mm -hmm. the rotation of the of the different wires. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I think yeah. the, the I was already go. Okay, let's check the hours. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, now we have goes into the distal treatment of the RCA. And now uh, there is no doubt. Let's make a pullback. Okay. Let's make a pullback. Okay. Okay. Now from here we can see that there is no, I mean, how to say, uh, severe damage to the vessel. Here is within the human, and also, okay, I think that uh, from hematoma, yes, hematoma, 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 yes, yeah. hematoma from the later that here is a subintimal tracking space. Here is the whole segment is a subintimal tracking, but it's within yeah. the vessel architecture. I think this is a great demonstration of uh, using the uh, narco technique and also the, using the last to puncture into the distal true lumen of the vessel. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we do not have to worry too much about this kind of uh, last and the subintimal tracking because uh, during the follow up, uh, the subintimal stenting compares to that of the true, true, uh, true lumen to true, true, true lumen strategy. There is no difference in the myocardial infarction and also the target layer revascularization. So, we do not have to worry too much about it. Okay, we are still in the subintimal space. We can see the compressed uh, relatively uh, intima on the side of the vessel. Due to the scoring bloom dilation, we can see we have a very good instant lumen gain. And now we are coming into the proximal site of RCA. So, uh, we do not worry too much because there is no major big side wrench uh, during the sub internal tracking. So we this is a great guarantee to the prognosis of this patient. Okay, here we come uh, into back into the true lumen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We guarantee to a uh, distal and proximal part also in the true lumen. These two parts. So uh, as we know, we can. Uh, we already see the results of the IWAS. Mm -hmm. So this is why I didn't do uh integrate uh, injection. Yes. Yeah. Because as we know, uh we try narco technique, mm -hmm. glass technique, mm -hmm. and distal fibrostic cap just at the distal bifurcation. Mm -hmm. So must in the whole segment should be in the sub intima space. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh Next question is, if we will implant the stand this mm -hmm. time or mm -hmm. just do spine. Uh, so, uh, how to do next? Uh, to uh, let me check the, also again, I want to confirm one thing is that, uh, I mean, the distal PLV, whether it's uh, within, how to say, the, the, the true lumen side, whether there is any distal landing spots. So if the distal part, we have some good, uh, recognize the landing spot, we can make an stand from the distal part directly to the proximal part. If the bifurcation zone, especially the POC segment of the distal bifurcation, it's uh, how to say uh, ambiguous and there is no clear landing zone. If we put a stand at the distal bifurcation, we may take the great risk of losing a very big side branch, for example, the PRV or something. This is not good choice because it's the uh, avoid the prognosis of the patient. So I think this is our key information. Let me check yeah. the distal bifurcation site.
Well, we couldn't make sure that the uh, posterior lateral branch were is in the true lumen. Yeah. So the feeling told me maybe in, in the, the sub intimate space. Okay. Yes, and, and also there is another very important information is that we can see the hematoma has been, how to say, proceed engaged into the this, uh, how to say, distal bifurcation a little bit. So yeah. uh, it's, it didn't resist it only within the bifurcation proximal segment. The hematoma has been engaged into the distal small branch a little bit. So I don't, do not think that this is a good sign because uh, after balloon further balloon dilation or stenting, this hematoma may engage into the even more distal part. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. So that means this time we may do a spam. Yes, maybe right. a spam, yes. Investment, yeah. investment, okay, investment. Be, yes. And mm -hmm. for this kind of case, uh, uh, we have more chance next mm -hmm. time when we do angiogram. Yes. The uh, RC already we can mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the wear already come to the distal tournament. Mm -hmm. What we need is just the uh, hematoma mm -hmm. to solve the mm -hmm. hematoma, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh so the post lateral branch i i couldn't make sure the wire in the uh should mm -hmm. so be in the maybe in the sub intimate space and the yes. sasuki again mm -hmm. sasuki and uh, i run through where please someone so uh, i will mm -hmm. try to advance the wire because we we have a retrograde wire in the pda yes so we will try if the wire could mm -hmm. come to the PDA. Mm -hmm. If the hematoma allow me to advance the wire to the PDA, mm -hmm. okay, we will inflate and then check out yeah. again. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone explained the spam as a investment uh, combined with uh, star or last uh, without stenting. So actually, is, here is some tricks and points for the spam techniques. For example, how to control the anti-grade hematoma and what's the best harvest time? Uh, how do we choose the size of the investment balloon? That's true, please. And also um, uh, answer, how to evaluate the situation or how to say the, the, the uh, result of the uh, uh, spam. Here is some teach point. Uh, so for me, I think that um, to choose the right balloon and using the IFC image, for example, IVS system to evaluate and uh, to get the information of the current situation is very important because we just made adverse pullback. We can see from one clock, we can see that sharp spot. Uh, it's a wire from uh, PLV. So from this angle, because there is a very big attenuated plug at two to three o'clock, it's hard to tell whether this PLV wire is within the what to say, intima or sub-intima tracking. So I do not think it's a good choice to use a balloon to dilate the PLV wire. And now that we are trying to use an, uh, another wire to go into the uh, distal PDA with a retrograde wire as a landmarker. Okay, I totally agree with you. <laughs> okay, that is why I didn't use IWAS to check mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. branch, mm -hmm. the 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 where position, because mm -hmm. I think uh, probably in the sub intimate space. Yes. So, uh, but I do not worry too much because we yeah. already confirmed that the distal wire is in the true lumen. And also, we just uh, use a 2 balloon to make the uh, uh, spam techniques to maintain the proximal part, make some instant lumen gain. So, I think that's Although that we do not put a stand in this time during the follow up, and uh, when we harvest, maybe there is a high risk of, of uh, how to say, automatic recanalization and uh, makes the uh, falling procedures relatively easy. Okay, we are performing the second time using the uh, dual lumen caster to try to go into the PDA side branch. Okay. During the course of withdrawal, mm -hmm. just to make the wire, it, it, we could advance the wire to the mm -hmm. uh, PDA. Okay. So, Professor Lee, what wire are you going to use for this puncture, this anti uh, I think uh, commonly workhorse wire. Okay. Software. Okay. I just like to use a polymer jacket. Mm -hmm. 
or other very strong wear, but uh, here, uh, yeah, a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I think, uh, mm -hmm. hey, uh, as we know, here there is a angle mm -hmm. here. So, Slow a little bit. Yeah. Epicardo, please. Auto. Epicardo, yes. A little bit of REO, please. Okay. okay, we can see where the proximal uh, we can see exit, uh, but a different angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think this is a pretty tough situation because this is a CTO case and also it's a bifurcation situation. So, yes, this is a. I think so, this makes sense because the CT uh, rector mark is four yeah. marks. It's extremely difficult. Although there is not a lot of evidence, but uh, some, how to say, uh, doctors try to use a DEB balloon for the CTO segment and also during the investment, but there is not a lot of uh, strong evidence to support this kind of uh, techniques. Although there is some, how to say, number is not so great. I mean, the studies uh, follow up for drug eluting balloons during their uh, spam uh, strategies. Uh, usually it's a one-to-one -one ratio using the DEB for the CTO segment. Uh, however, mm, during the follow up of um, uh, one month to three months, uh, some cases uh, observed the recanalization and also the intima, or to say shrink, uh, reduced the plaque burden, but this is not 100% guarantee. So this is not a, and uh, let's see that it's often used. Okay, I think uh, I need a more stiffer, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, field STA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Field STA, please. Are you clean? Mm -hmm. 